All right, guys, I'm getting ready to go to Sam's to get my tires rotated. And I wanted to take some readings with my calipers here to see what the wear is at 18,500. I'm overdue on my rotation due to this long trip we just took. Uh, they seem to be wearing pretty evenly, though, other than this, this front one, which the front left one, which is a brand new tire. And I had it changed out at 7,500. Sam's gave it to me, no, no cost, uh, due to a nail on the curve where you supposedly can't patch them. I've done it before. But anyway, um, kind of a recap on my trip. It was a total disaster. <laughs> In fact, it was such a disaster, I had to take some notes. But the good thing is we got home safely. The truck ran great. Uh, no issues with the camper and I turned 73 years old while I was on this trip. That could go in a bad column, however. The bad part, the Tetons were full of smoke. We could not even see them. It was so covered with smoke from the California fires and all of that stuff west of us. And we had a south wind the whole time, southwest wind the entire time. So it was, that was kind of a flop. Uh, I had seen them before, but my wife hadn't seen them. Uh, my wife, we had to cut the trip short. We were going to go up to Glacier, uh, and we had to cut it short. My wife got pneumonia, of all things, up there. We thought it was COVID. I said, well, she ended up in the hospital there in Jackson Hole at St. John's Hospital, and that's what they diagnosed it as. But you know how these diagnose, diagnostics go and stuff on COVID. I'm not sure everybody knows. She did test negative. And so I decided we needed to get home because I didn't want to get end up sick or, you know, confined for 14 days up there and end up with, you know, stranded 1,800 miles away from home. So we did a marathon drive. I drove all she could take the first night. She was really sick. And the second night, uh, I drove from Trinidad, Colorado on to uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. And, you know, don't feel sorry for us because everything's fine. She's fine. Everything turned out fine. Uh, most people drive away from a hurricane. I drive into the hurricane because I wanted to get home before Hurricane Laura, Laura hit this area so I could secure things and get things back in order, which I accomplished. I drove from Trinidad, Colorado to Lafayette, Louisiana, like I said. We spent the night in the uh, parking lot there at Walmart in Trinidad. In fact, that's that picture in the video. Also, uh, the wind deflector was a disaster, if you've seen that video. <laughs> uh, I got lost in Tyler, Texas, and there was two sweet little girls that I, I what happened is I got off of a, got off the Interstate 20 to play with my wind deflector, and I got off on an exit that had no on-ramp. So I had to go into Tyler, got totally lost, Got some instructions from one little girl at a, like a Circle K or whatever you want to call them, quick stop. And she showed me on her iPhone, look, just go up here, take a left, it'll bring you back to the interstate. Well, I didn't see no lefts. So I kept going and I ended up with a stop at another one of these quick, quick stops. And again, the little girl said, well, look, you go up there to the four way and you take a left and you go down to the bunny. And when you see the bunny, you take a left, you go down to the pilot truck stop. And we went, I was in the boondocks at this point. I never saw a bunny. I don't know what bunny, I said, the bunny? She said, yeah, there's a bunny there. I said, okay, like standing on the corner or what? You know, a picture of a bunny? Never did see it. Anyway, uh, just about the time I got to where I was really getting frustrated. My GPS picked up a route that got me back to the interstate. So that ended well, but it probably knocked off a good 45 minutes off of our trip. We ended up getting home at 3.30 in the morning. Anyway, enough of that crap. Uh, it, it was all good. I'm happy. 
just looking at my gauges, you know. Like I say, it's the trip, not the destination for me. I love gathering this data and looking at it when I get home, and I did a lot of that. And I got a couple of videos that coming up that I think might be interesting regarding that. So anyway, let's look at my data that I gathered on the, the tires themselves at 18.5 here. Before I go rotate them, not that it matters, but at least I know where they're at. And we'll see what we, what our projected wear is for these tires. In other words, how, what's the projected life uh, on these tires based on the way they wear in at 18,500 miles. I have the Michelin Defender LTXs. They're the LT28560R20 black wall and it's a Lodi which is OEM although the OEM tires were a Firestone Transforce I believe they were called and they were complete junk. They wobbled at 70 miles an hour. They rode like they had cement in them instead of air and I can't say enough bad about that tire. I was at the dealer one day and the mechanic and the other guy was standing there looking at my front tires when I had about 28,000 miles on them and they were laughing at them. Probably because they were completely bald at 28,000 miles and I had been rotating them every 7,500 as per the manual. Now this 125 slash 122R, that refers to the maximum load and the R I believe refers to the speed rating. The speed, maximum speed on these tires is 106 miles per hour. I wish I would have known that because I would have slowed down. The maximum load is 3690 and the rear axle of my 4x4 Laramie is good for 6500 so you've got some leeway there. However, if you carry a maximum load on the rear of your truck, like, you know, with a big fiver or travel trailer where you've got a huge amount of tongue weight or something, you definitely want to keep 80 pounds in the rear. Some people reduce their air pressure while they're riding around empty and stuff, and there's some little apps you can do to to change the setting so it doesn't set an alarm off on your dash. But I keep 80 in mind. It rides fine with these Michelins. I mentioned earlier that I had 18.5 on the tires. I actually got 18.238 to be exact. And this this was my caliper readings. My rear was 0.31 and 0.31. They were pretty much identical. The front, the 0.38, that's that tire that was changed out at 7,500 miles with the nail in it. I probably shouldn't say anything about it because it, it kind of looks like it confused things. But I did do the calculations on it just to see if it was kind of tracking with the other tires. And it's actually tracking a little better than these original tires here. And the passenger side, the 0.28, that's an original tire and you can see that it's worn a little more than the rear so it looks like maybe the front tires were wearing a little faster than the rear it's hard to say but that's the way it looks also this is the total tread depth this is not to the wear bar the wear bar I measured the height at 0 0.085 and I subtracted that out in these charts as you'll see in a second because most people don't wear, run their tires all the way down to, you know, to the point where they bald. Although I pretty much did on those transfers just to get as much as I could. I was trying to get 30,000 out of them, but never did. But if you want to check my calculations, then you can see that the new tread depth is 0.445. And my current wear uh, is 0.127. And what I did is took an average of the three tires. I left the new one, or the one that has 7,500 miles less on it. I left that out. So I averaged these three numbers to come up with the 0.127 wear.
and that's from 0.445. So as you can see, if you ran them till they were bald, my projected estimated life is 63,779. That's 29% wear. And if you run them to the wear bar, 51,597. These are guaranteed for 50,000 miles. So it looks like these tires are going to make it fine. I was pretty conservative with my measurements. That's 35% worn. I was pretty conservative with my measurements. I wanted to, you know, not present something that I didn't think was possible to do. So we'll see how this goes in the future. And if you saw my original video on my, my first review at 7,500, this is a little, probably a little more realistic than the first 7,500 miles. But they're doing fine, and as I mentioned before, I'll never put anything but Michelins back on my truck. They just ride so well. Uh, they cured the 70 mile per hour wobble that I originally had, and it's just a great tire. They're not designed for very, uh, or real cold weather, by the way, so, you know, they're considered a all seasons tire. So just keep that in mind. It's a, it's a highway tire. They're whisper quiet. I, I just can't say enough good about them. But anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Sorry for the rambling. I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. And press the like button if you did. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you and adios.